Step one, choose a background for your flyer. I went ahead and chose my background photo from Google. Typically, that's one of the quickest and easiest things to do. Just make sure whatever image you use will allow the text to be seen. Then go ahead and save it somewhere that it will be easy to find when it's time to open it in Photoshop. Step two, open the chosen background with Photoshop. Once you're in Photoshop, hit File, Open, and find the picture that you previously saved for the background. Hit the Enter key to open it. Step three, resize your background image to your liking. For this step, we're gonna go to Image and then Image Size. A window should open where you can change your settings. The lock between width and height will keep your proportions the same. We're also going to change the resolution from 72 to 300 to make the image sharper. The mode for this will be called Bicubic Smoother to prevent any pixelation. After clicking OK, your image will become large due to the new resolution. You can go ahead and zoom out. Step 4. Get familiar with the basics. We're going to be working with the Move tool, which will help you move your text around, the Text tool, which will help you type whatever you desire, as well as the Crop tool, which will help you crop your image. Step 5. Set up the layer to be edited. You'll see when using Photoshop that the program utilizes layers. Layers are basically a way to keep all of your elements of your Photoshop document organized and in order. To unlock the background layer, which you need to do before editing, you will have to double click the layer. Once you double click the layer, a window should open. You can rename the layer if you like, but you don't have to. Now we're ready to get started. Step 6. Begin to place your desired text. For this step, we're going to be using the text tool. Go ahead and click on the text tool and then click on the background. That will automatically create a new line of text and a new layer. Pick the size of your font and then pick which font you'd like to use. This is very similar to using Microsoft Word. You can begin typing now. You should start out with the title and fill in the other details later. Use the Move tool to move your newly written text wherever you see fit. The pink line tells you exactly where the center of your image is so you can place your text accordingly. I'm going to speed up these next few steps as placing text merely involves repetition of the first step. Don't forget, this is your flyer so you can make it look however you like. When using the text tool, you can also drag it to make a text box which works exactly the same as a line of text. When making a flyer of any type, you should include date, time, location, and any other important information. Remember, you can use the Move tool as much as you need to to adjust your text, and the pink lines will guide you as far as the placement on the page. Off to the right in the Layer section, you'll see that each element of text has its own layer. Step 7. Crop the image to complement the text. This is where the crop tool comes in. A perimeter will appear around your image. Click and drag to change the border. Whenever you are finished adjusting the image, hit the Enter key and the crop will be applied. Step 8. Add the final aesthetic touches. Oftentimes you'll find that you feel like your text doesn't stand out against your background. There is something you can do about this that is actually quite common. Double click on the text layer that you'd like to change. A window will pop up with many options. Don't be worried, we're only going to use one today and it's called Drop Shadow. Drop Shadow places a shadow behind your text that will make it pop. Here the features are distance, spread, and size. You can play around with these features to see what you like best. There are no rules to this step. You can make your drop shadow as dark or light, as big or small as you want it. 
whatever you think looks best for your flyer. Adjusting the opacity has to do with the transparency of the drop shadow. It can become less or more transparent depending on if you move the control to the right or the left. When you're done, click OK to apply the changes. The effects are shown underneath the text layer. Step 9. Double check layer placement. In the layer section next to each layer, there's an icon that looks like an eye. When you click it, that layer disappears temporarily without actually deleting it. This way you can make sure everything is exactly where you want it to be before moving forward. Step 10. Save and format your finished flyer. When you're finished, you'll want to save your flyer. Photoshop automatically saves documents as a .psd, which is a Photoshop document. Likely, if you're planning on sending it out, that's not the format you want it in. Go ahead and name your document. We're going to change the format from a Photoshop document to a JPEG. Warning, when you save it as a JPEG, it will only save as a copy. That means if you want to go back and edit it as a Photoshop document, you will need to use the Save As command. Once you save it, it will give you the option to change your file size. Usually somewhere between small and large is fine. I'm going to keep mine at 8 so that my file is not too large. This is your final step in creating a flyer. Make sure you've saved it somewhere where you will remember so that you can send it out when necessary. Congratulations! You've completed the instructions on making a basic flyer. As you practice, you can try out new creative styles that suit your purpose. This skill can be used for invitations, announcements, business cards, and the like. Thanks for watching!